For the latest in strategic affairs, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Click the bell icon for updates. Last few days, everyone in India perhaps is aware that India's first indigenously built aircraft carrier to be named INS Vikrant in the coming year uh, has gone for its first sea trial. So what are aircraft carriers? What is their function? Why are they so important to any Navy? And what is the history of aircraft carriers in the Indian Navy is the subject of this week's Simply Nitin. I'm Nitin Gokhale. So aircraft carriers are the pinnacle of any Navy's power projection. They are the, the apogee of uh, sea power that any Navy can possess. And that is why aircraft carriers are the crown jewel of big navies who are actually called the blue water navies. Blue water means uh, able to operate on the high seas, in the oceans and long distance coverage given by these huge ships which are at least 40,000 tons displacement when they go out in the uh, open sea. Now, they hold a preeminent position because they can carry aircraft, helicopters and uh, aircraft numbers can vary from 18 to about 30. So as these aircraft carriers go out in the sea, uh, they can project a country's power long distance. So for instance, if India's aircraft carrier goes into, let's say, uh, Western Indian Ocean, then it can uh, actually, uh, the aircraft on the uh, deck can fly uh, three to 400 nautical miles beyond where the ship is uh, anchored or is uh, steaming in. So that means uh, if India wants to project power and uh, show its strength, it can be done through an aircraft carrier. India has uh, been uh, lucky, the Indian Navy and uh, has been uh, very uh, forward looking in that sense to induct aircraft carriers in its fleet very early. So the first aircraft carrier uh, bought from uh, the UK or, the, or Great Britain was in 1961. An incomplete aircraft carrier called HMS Hercules uh, was converted uh, into uh, what is called INS Vikrant in 1961. INS Vikrant played a big role in uh, blockading the sea around uh, the Chittagong port and uh, the Bay of Bengal during the 1971 war, whose 50th anniversary we are celebrating this year. In fact, uh, that is where the Indian Navy came into its own, because the Indian Navy also attacked the uh, Karachi uh, harbour and destroyed uh, most of Pakistan's uh, naval strength in the Karachi harbour. It's a uh, stuff that legends are made of. Uh, after that, uh, it, it didn't have much of a role because there were no wars after that. But uh, in uh, uh, the subsequent years, India also bought uh, something called HMS uh, Hermes from Britain and converted that into INS Virat, which served the Indian Navy for over 30 years. It was bought in, uh, in 1987 and uh, it was decommissioned in 2013. Then in 2013, India got uh, another aircraft carrier from Russia. Uh, it used to be called Admiral Gorshkov. It was destroyed uh, most partially in a big fire there, which was restored. And INS Vikramaditya was born. So today, India has one aircraft carrier, INS Vikramaditya, uh, which is operational. And the second aircraft carrier, which is the first indigenously built aircraft carrier called IAC-1, Indigenous Aircraft 1. Uh, built by Cochin Shipyard, just went out on sea trials uh, last week. And I was fortunate to be on uh, that ship uh, for about uh, five to six hours and see it for myself. The tremendous progress that has been made uh, by uh, the naval designers, the uh, MSMEs, uh, original equipment manufacturers and the Cochin Shipyard in putting together this very complex ship uh, aircraft carriers are not easy to either design or build because uh, they need to cater not just for uh, sea voyage but also for uh, landing aircraft, uh, taking off of the aircraft, uh, the fighter aircraft from uh, that deck and also helicopters landing there and to house over 1500 crew uh, at any given time. 
So that's what uh, the uh, complexity of an aircraft carrier is. Of course, the history of aircraft carrier begins uh, in the world way back in uh, 1910. Uh, they were uh, seaplane carrying ships uh, initially and then they uh, got converted into helicopter carrying ships. But it was in Second World War that the aircraft carriers came into their own as a major power projection and major uh, force to reckon with. The Japanese, surprisingly, who do not have any aircraft carrier at the moment but have several helicopter carrying uh, ships, fielded six aircraft carriers together in uh, World War II and uh, attacked Pearl Harbor, the uh, most uh, significant turning point uh, in Second World War when uh, the um, Japanese attack on uh, American uh, base in uh, Hawaii uh, actually t turned the tide and the Americans were forced to join the war happened because Japan that time was a very mighty sea power. As I mentioned, they uh, brought in these uh, six aircraft carriers to uh, launch an attack from Japan onto Pearl Harbor. You can imagine the distance. So, uh, and then of course, uh, the UK had about seven aircraft carriers, but they were not put together uh, in one attack. Uh, they were operating at different places. The US subsequently fielded something like uh, 10 or 11 aircraft carriers towards the end of the Second World War. And the aircraft carriers then now became uh, the mainstay of the US Navy. As they say, because of the large number of aircraft carriers and the bigger size, the mighty size of aircraft carriers like USS Nimitz, which have a displacement of over 100,000 tons uh, and carrying over 60 aircraft on its deck, uh, the aircraft carriers became what is called a floating sea base. They could project power, they could launch aircraft uh, even in the Gulf War I, Gulf War II, and even on the initial attacks on Afghanistan took place from aircraft carriers of the United States stationed in uh, the Gulf of Persia or the Persian Gulf as it is called and taking off from there or firing missiles from there became a norm. Uh, in fact, uh, there is a joke that the largest air force in the world belongs to the United States Navy because they carry so many aircraft on their various uh, nuclear powered and conventional uh, aircraft uh, carriers that uh, today uh, America fields. Uh, there are very few nations. Russia is one, UK is another. UK's Queen Elizabeth, in fact, uh, aircraft carrier is right now transiting through Asia, is likely to come back uh, into Indian Ocean and uh, also exercise with the Indian Navy on its return, on its way back to UK in October. Uh, India is the, another uh, country, prominent country to have and will have two operational aircraft carriers when INS Vikrant, uh, which is uh, going to be named as I ISE, one is no, going to be named as INS Vikrant in 2022 when it gets commissioned. Now, the old INS Vikrant got decommissioned, as I said, in 1987. Uh, and that same name has been adopted for this uh, IAC uh, one, which will be uh, renamed or which will be named as INS Vikrant. Now, consider this. The... Uh, Directorate of Naval Design, uh, which came into being in the Indian Navy in 1970. Of course, there were predecessors to that organization in the Navy itself, which started in 1950. First designed the aircraft carrier. It uh, sort of decided on the composition and the permutation and combination, and then gave it to Cochin Shipyard, which is not a defense PSU, but is a civil uh, shipyard, uh, because uh, the Southern Naval Command is located in uh, Kochi. Uh, that helped. And then it was decided that the aircraft, the fighter aircraft taking off and landing uh, on the IAC-1 or the future INS Vikrant would have a system called STOBAR, which is short takeoff but arrested recovery, which means the planes will take off on a ramp. If you see uh, in, the, in the video or the pictures, there is a slight angle to the ramp. Uh, the flight deck has an angle like this. And then the aircraft uh, take off from there. But when they come back to land, they are arrested by a wire uh, in a hook which is uh, in the, uh, between the wings of the uh, aircraft. So it's a very complex operation even to operate the aircraft carriers because if, you, if the wire doesn't hook the aircraft, the aircraft has to actually continue to take off. So uh, what happens on um, the aircraft carriers landing, these pilots are trained to uh, push maximum power when they are landing, which is against all uh, laws of physics and uh, nature. 
that they are landing with maximum power because in case the wire doesn't arrest the aircraft, uh, they can easily take off uh, from the ramp because it's a split second decision. If the wire doesn't get uh, arrested or the aircraft doesn't get arrested, it has to take off. Otherwise, there will be an accident. So it's a very complex uh, kind of a, uh, exercise that they do. So uh, that is what uh, was decided that this will be a stow bar system on the iron, future INS Vikrant. The ship uh, on which I uh, was uh, lucky to board, embark on, is 262 meters long and um, is about 18 floors, um, you know, high, you can say. Below the deck, there are 14 floors. Above the deck, there are three floors. And one, of course, is the, uh, the bridge, uh, which is there. So 18 floors, which is uh, something like uh, what they call 18-story high floating building. Uh, and um, the steel... Uh, used in this building this ship is about 21,000 tons, which is equivalent to building three Eiffel Towers. Uh, that's the kind of uh, steel uh, that, that has been used there. Uh, the flight deck, as you can see, is the most open area, is the size of uh, two football fields, conventional football fields. Uh, the two takeoff and, run, takeoff and landing runways are there. Uh, of course, the arrestor wire, as I mentioned. And uh, the endurance of this aircraft carrier, uh, which, which is the pride of the uh, Indian uh, Navy and of course the nation, uh, is about 7,500 nautical miles, which means it can cover India's total coastline of 3,500 kilometers twice over without refueling or without coming ashore. That's the kind of capacity that has been built into this um, aircraft carrier. If you go into the gut of the aircraft carrier, there are so many cables and pipes and compartments that uh, nearly 1500 uh, kilometers of cable uh, has been used or cabling has been done in, within the aircraft carrier. They are as complex as that. And of course, uh, the biggest achievement uh, for India is that 76% of uh, the aircraft carrier built in Cochin shipyard is indigenous. That means uh, Indian OEMs, Indian MSMEs, Indian design, Indian shipyard uh, building uh, skills, all that has been used. So it's a true reflection of uh, the current policy uh, or about uh, the policy which has been in force for about 5-6 years now, Make in India or Atmanirbhar Bharat, is actually uh, helping uh, create or build this uh, ship which has done this first sea trials. It has uh, attained maximum uh, what is called the engine power, uh, the speed that it wants and the endurance. Without a hitch, it did a five-day uh, sea trial, has come back to Cochin Shipyard, and now all the necessary additions, alterations, tweaks uh, will be done, and uh, the fine tuning, as it were, of the aircraft carrier will be done in the coming months. After that, again, it will go out for sea trial with the full crew, and uh, then, of course, it will go long distance to, again, test what happens. The biggest test will be, of course, to uh, start fighter aircraft operation from the flight deck of uh, the future INS Vikrant. So far, helicopters have been able to land. That operation has been done. In fact, I also was lucky to get onto an helicopter uh, of the, uh, the topmost uh, officer of the Southern Naval Command, the CNC, uh, and uh, land uh, along with uh, our colleague Rohit Pandita on the uh, deck of uh, the future INS Vikrant, uh, which shows that the helicopter operations are now being perfected or practiced well. But the aircraft operations uh, will be the key. Once that is perfected and the aircraft that are going to come in on uh, the uh, INS, future INS Vikrant are going to be the MiG-29Ks, which are operating on INS Vikramaritya as of now. And maybe in the future, the light combat aircraft, the naval version of it, the LCA naval, uh, will, will be operating from there. There will, of course, be, uh, there will be uh, the helicopters like Kamau and ALH, the advanced light helicopter built by HAL will also be operating from this aircraft carrier. So, in all, why, why I wanted to tell you about the aircraft carriers is the fact that the aircraft carriers are the epitome of naval power. Uh, while uh, there is a debate also generated simultaneously whether India needs one more aircraft carrier so that uh, when one is in refit or repairs, two will uh, constantly operate uh, on the Indian, um, Indian area of influence. But uh, that is a call that the government will have to take. 
uh, also look at the context, look at uh, the cost and look at the utility in the future. Because there is a school of thought which says that the aircraft carrier is a very uh, juicy target for uh, long-range missiles and uh, aircraft uh, of the Air Force, uh, adversaries Air Force. And therefore, they should not be uh, looked at or utilized in the future or built in the future. But that's a separate debate. We can talk about it in some other forum or in some other program. But for the moment, let's take pride in the fact that India has managed to build an aircraft carrier from scratch and it has uh, proved its uh, power, its uh, skill and its uh, utility, uh, rather than utility, its, uh, uh, you know, the ability to uh, do uh, what it's supposed to do uh, in the first sea trial itself. That's the big achievement and I think uh, everybody in the Indian Navy from designers to the builders and the ship's crew and the Cochin shipyard, the MSMEs, the OEMs, uh, engineers, everyone deserves a congratulation uh, from uh, all of us. And that's why I thought I'll just uh, point out that uh, this is not something that is done um, very regularly. This is the first indigenously built aircraft carrier and aircraft carriers have a charm of their own. Uh, when you see it, they are majestic, they are big and they project uh, strength and power. That's what India is trying to do in its area of uh, influence and operations. Uh, but whether we'll have one more aircraft carrier or not, we will uh, look at it in the future. For the moment, I'm going to stop here. But don't stop watching Strat News Global or Simply Nitin. Keep sending feedback. You know what are our social media handles. And of course, subscribe to all of them to our YouTube channel. And keep sending feedback and comments so that we can improve and we can add to our programs and our uh, offerings that we do on Strat News Global. Until the next time, it's goodbye.